Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we're going to be taking a look at the all new Menace Forum X400 Mini PC. And what makes this one special, at least in my opinion, is it's powered by a Ryzen 5 Pro 4650 APU. So we have a 4th gen Ryzen APU and a super small form factor. And this is a desktop class processor. It can actually be swapped out for the more powerful 4750G if you ever wanted to do that down the road or if you could get your hands on one. So it's got the same form factor as the other Elite Minis that they've been putting out. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably seen me review a few of these Menace Forums Mini PCs in the last few months. But this is the one that I've been highly interested in because I'm a big fan of these Ryzen APUs. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to receive the Elite Mini X400. We also have a magnetic dust filter to go right on the top here. HDMI cable, DisplayPort cable. We also have a VESA mount and the 95 watt power supply. So taking a look at the unit here, it's pretty plain Jane. We do have tons of ventilation all the way around the unit. On the front, we have a power LED indicator, audio jack, and our power slash reset button. Over on the left hand side, we have all of our audio jacks and a micro SD card reader. Moving around to the back, we have all of our I.O. Now, I will admit I would have loved to see a USB Type-C connector on this unit here, but even on their other Elite Mini series, they don't have any. This is basically what we get. Four USB 3.0 ports, dual gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, full-size DisplayPort, and our power input. So before we go over the complete specs and get into some testing, I did want to pull the bottom off this thing, or at least the main board out of the unit, to see what we're working with here. And to my surprise, there's a lot included with the X400. If we get a bit closer here, you can see that it will support a 2.5 inch drive, mechanical or SSD. We have the bracketing system and the cable included. This also supports an M.2 SSD. Unfortunately, on the unit that I have, which is a pre-production unit, it's not NVMe compatible. It's only PCIe X4, but like I said, this is a pre-production unit, so that could change down the road. They've also included another M.2 slot, so we can expand the storage even further, but this is going to accept a 2242 M.2 SSD. And these X400 units actually come with Wi-Fi 6 pre-installed. It's an Intel AX200 card, so we have 802.11 AX Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 right out of the box. And wrapping up the bottom of the unit here, this does support dual channel SODEM DDR4, and this one came pre-installed with 16 gigabytes of 3200 MHz RAM. Like I said, this is a desktop class CPU, and the little cooler they're using on here definitely does an amazing job. I was really surprised with the thermals, and by the end of this video, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. But this is a single fan aluminum heatsink on this unit. It does have a copper plug in the heatsink, and as you can see here, we have that Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G, and this can be upgraded or downgraded given that it's a desktop CPU. So when it comes to the specs on the X400s, there's several different configurations that you can choose, but I'm just going to go over what I have here. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G, 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.7 GHz, boost of 4.2. The GPU is the built-in Radeon 7 at 1900 MHz, and I'm not exactly sure if they're referring to this as Vega anymore, but on the spec sheet, there's no reference to Vega. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, a 256 gigabyte non-NVMe M.2 SSD, a pre-installed Intel 200AX Wi-Fi module, so we have Wi-Fi 6 802.11AX Wi-Fi, dual gigabit Ethernet around back, and it also supports Bluetooth 5.0. And this comes pre-installed with Windows 10 Home 64 bit. So I've had the Elite Mini X400 in my possession for about a week, and I've actually had it hooked up and using it every day. This little mini PC is trucked through everything that I've thrown at it, and I could definitely use this as my everyday desktop. Even when it comes to editing 1080p video, this will do it. I've always been a fan of these Ryzen APUs, but the 4th gen and hopefully the 5th gen has so much to offer when it comes to a small form factor build like this. Alright, so here it is. We're running Windows 10 Home 64-bit. I've installed a lot of applications to test out. In this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some 8K video playback, web browsing, and PC gaming. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G, 16GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz, and the built-in Radeon 7 graphics. So like I mentioned, I've had this in my possession for about a week, so I've been able to test this out, and it is a very snappy machine. Those 6 cores, 12 threads, up to 4.2 GHz definitely get you by. Basically, you can do anything you need on this PC here. So first things first, let's just do some web browsing. We'll head over to AMD's website. Just give you a look here. 
I mean, everything loads up quicker than any PC that I have. I mean, it's on par with my high-end PCs. Everything's great here. Now, I usually test out 4K video playback with smaller machines like this, but today we're actually going to take it up to 8K. So go to 8K, Stats for Nerds, Full Screen. I'm not getting any drop frames. Now, if I do want to skip past this here, we might have a few drop frames on the initial buffer up here in the top left hand corner. You'll get a few drop frames, but as soon as it catches up, it's good to go. So obviously if we're doing 8K video streaming like this, it's going to do 720p, 1080 and 4K with no issues whatsoever. So next up, we have some benchmarks. First one, we have Geekbench 5 single core, 1094, multi, 5,482. Now recently, I did a new desk mini build, and I used the 4750G, which is a higher end APU than this 4650G that we have in the X400, and I kind of wanted to compare the scores here. So here's a look at that desk mini build, and as you can see, it did beat it in single and multi-core, and I kind of expected this going into it because that is a higher end APU. Eight cores, 16 threads on that one. Next up, we have 3D Mark Fire Strike on the X400 that we're taking a look at in this video. Total score, 3167 on that desk mini build with that higher end APU, 4209. And finally, we have 3D Mark Time Spy. Total score on this little machine, 1066 on the desk mini, 1638. So yeah, I mean, if you can get a hold of that 4750 for cheap, I would definitely go with that over the 4650. But this little machine is still doing a great job for the form factor we're working with here. So now it's time to move over to some real world gaming. Here we have CSGO, 1080p, medium settings, and unfortunately with these latest versions of CSGO we can't run Afterburner over top, but it is in the background. By the end of this run here, I was actually averaging 73 FPS, which really isn't that bad. Next up, we have Skyrim Special Edition, 1080p, medium settings. I was really hoping that we could hit 60 at medium settings, but it looks like we'll have to drop this down to low. Either way you look at it, I think performance here is great, and I'd still play this game at 50. Doom Eternal was a little worse than I thought it would be. 1080p, low settings, 80% resolution scale. By the end of this, I was averaging 44 FPS. Was really hoping we could get some more out of this. I mean, if you drop that resolution scale down a little more, you could. But by that time, it'd be best just to go down to 720p. Now when it comes to Dauntless, this is an odd one in my experience. We're at 1080p, 100% resolution scale, low settings, and I was only able to average 46 FPS. Now I've run this on other machines that seem to have lower specs and got better performance out of it, but this time around it just wasn't doing great with this APU. So I've got a couple more here to go through. Name of the game, settings used, and performance metrics will be on screen for these last three.
So along with all the testing that I do with these mini PCs, I always like to monitor power draw from the wall using a kilowatt meter. Idle, 9.8 watts. 4K video playback, it jumps up to 14.3. Gaming at 1080p with GTA 5, around 52.7 watts. And the maximum that I could get this to pull with my extreme test, which consists of running Cinebench, R20, and 3D Mark Time Spy at the same time, 114 watts. And keep in mind, this is an extreme test. The GPU and CPU are totally maxed out. You'll never see this kind of power draw from the wall, but I always like to test it just to see what this thing can do. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I was really surprised with the thermal performance. At idle, around 31 degrees Celsius, 4K video playback jumped up to 38, gaming on average 67 degrees Celsius, and the maximum that I could get this thing to go to was 84 degrees Celsius. So I do think they have that thermal lock there at 84 degrees Celsius, but then again, this was with my extreme test, and I never saw any temperatures close to this unless I was running that. So overall, I'm really impressed with the X400. I love the performance here. That little CPU definitely puts it down. I wish we could get a little more out of this APU, but unfortunately, it's not a dedicated GPU. This is built into the die, but for something like that, I think it does a good job. Now, if you're looking for a mini PC that puts out a little more power, Menace Forums actually makes the H31G. I've done a review on it. It has a 9th gen i5 or an i3, but it has a dedicated GTX 1050. And that little thing definitely puts some graphics power down given that it's such a small form factor PC. And if I had to choose between the two for gaming, I would definitely choose the H31G, but if I just needed something for light gaming and an everyday desktop, I would probably go with the X400 here. So in my opinion, it's a pretty impressive little mini PC. Now there's a lot more that I want to test here. I will be making a dedicated emulation video that's coming up soon on the channel, so definitely keep an eye out. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the X400, be it a game or a Linux variant, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I will leave links to the Menace Forum website in the description in case you want to check this out. But like always, thanks for watching. <laughs>